I'll show you how to create flexible silhouettes using Affinity Photo. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.3. The first step to creating a silhouette is to make a selection of what's to be silhouetted. In this case, it's the young man. For that, I'll use the selection brush. Before I begin selecting the subject, I'll make sure Add Mode is enabled. This button on the Context Toolbar should be depressed. This will grow or add to the selection with each stroke of the brush. Snap the edges should also be checked. This helps the selection automatically grow out to the nearest edge, saving you time and effort. Of course, well-defined edges are needed for this to work well. I'll start painting the subject to select him, starting at the top of his head. I can adjust the size of the brush with the bracket keys. I'll continue downwards until he's entirely selected. It may be hard to see them, but the marching ants are there. The selection is done, so I'll click the Refine button on the Context Toolbar to refine or improve the selection. Unselected areas are shaded in red while selected areas look normal. At the bottom of the dialog, there's a series of adjustment brushes. It's currently set to matte. That's a good brush for painting around the edges and giving Affinity a chance to improve the selection in those areas. I'll use it to fix any issues around the edges of the selection. The foreground brush is used to select an area and background to deselect. I typically use these when working away from the edges of the selection. I'll zoom in. Holding down the Command key, Control key in Windows, I'll tap the plus sign key. I'll adjust the size of the brush. I'm trying to remove the yellow traces of the background in the subject's hair to get a more accurate outline for the silhouette. All I have to do is paint over the edge and Affinity will try to make a better selection. It's doing a pretty good job. It's really up to you how accurate you want your selection to be. It'll all be filled in with a solid color in any case, but I think it looks better the more accurate it is. I'll move over to subject looking for unselected areas as well as areas that shouldn't be selected but are. His red shirt makes it hard to tell it apart from red shaded unselected areas. To make it easier to tell which is which, I'll select black matte from the preview dropdown in the upper right of the dialog. Now unselected areas are black. I'll take a moment and paint over any problem areas I find on his shirt. I'm done checking his shirt, so I'll change the preview back to overlay. I'll continue moving over to subject, looking for problem areas and painting over them if I find any. Alright, so I'm done with that. I'll zoom out by pressing Command-0 or Control-0 in Windows. From the Output Selection drop-down at the bottom of the dialog, I'll select Mask and click Apply. The background is gone because the black part of the mask has made it invisible. Notice also the second thumbnail next to the background layer's thumbnail. That's the mask we just created. I'll grab it and place it beneath the background layer. Let's have a look at it. First I'll select its layer. Then, holding down the Option key, Alt key in Windows, I'll click on it. The subject should be solid white and everything else solid black. I'll zoom in for a closer look. I'm looking for areas that are not pure white or black. Here's a grayish area along the edge of the subject. Areas like this will be semi-transparent once the silhouette is created. That's not good because a silhouette should be opaque. Luckily, this can be easily fixed. I'll grab the paintbrush and set its color to white. 
a pure white is needed for this. So make sure the little slider up here is all the way to the right. It should say 100. And flow and opacity should both be set to 100%. Since I'll be painting along the edge, I'll set the brush's blend mode to overlay. This will prevent it from painting on the black areas. If you need to paint somewhere away from the edge, set the brush blend mode to normal. When the brush is in overlay mode, only gray areas will be painted white or black, depending on the brush color. If the area is solid black or white, you'll need to change the brush's blend mode to normal. I'll paint over the problem area to fix it. It's now solid white, so it'll be opaque when the silhouette is created, which is what I want. I'll look for more areas like this and paint over them. I'll paint over any imperfections, slight or otherwise. Okay, I'll zoom out. If there are any white or gray areas in the black parts of the mask, paint over them with a black brush. Just remember that to paint over a solid white, the brush's blend mode must be set to normal. I'll click on the background layer to see the photo again. Now from the layer menu, I'll select New Fill Layer. I'll set its color to black, the classic silhouette color, by clicking up here. Now to create the silhouette, I'll grab the mask and drag it over the fill layer until just the fill layer's thumbnail is highlighted and release it. And there it is. It looks pretty good. The white part of the mask lets the fill layer show through, while the black part makes the fill layer invisible, allowing you to see the layer beneath. The result is that the subject is replaced by whatever color the fill layer happens to be, while the background remains the same. Because I'm using a fill layer, the silhouette's color can be easily changed. Just make sure the fill layer is selected, and then click up here to change its color. Super easy. If it's not working, just select the Flood Fill tool first. I'll change the background by adding a fill layer. From the layer menu, I'll select New Fill Layer. I'll drag it below the Silhouette layer in the Layer stack. I can change its color just like I did with the Silhouette. And because I'm using a Fill layer for the Silhouette, I can also apply a gradient to it. I'll click on the Silhouette's layer to select it and grab the Gradient tool. Chances are it's already selected. I'll pull it down. The color of the gradient can be changed by clicking on any of its nodes and then selecting a color. Pretty cool. I'll set it back to a solid color by selecting the Flood Fill tool and then choosing a color like before. You can also add special effects to the silhouette, but first its layer must be rasterized, which will turn it into a pixel layer. Before I do that, I'll duplicate it by pressing Command J, Control J in Windows, so I still have the original for safekeeping. From the layer menu, I'll select Rasterize. The fill layer and its mask have been replaced by a single pixel layer. To add special effects, click the FX icon at the bottom of the layer panel. I'll give it an outline just to demonstrate. I'll increase the radius. And I'll change its color by clicking here where it says Color and selecting a new one. You can experiment on your own with these other effects. Now that it's rasterized, the color can't be changed as easily as before. Instead, first select the Flood Fill tool, 
choose a color, and then click on the silhouette. And adding a gradient won't work like before either. For these reasons, you may prefer not to rasterize. So that's a fairly simple and flexible way to create silhouettes in Affinity Photo. Thank you for watching.